Hello and welcome. My name is Saul Adam, and on behalf of my wife and myself, I want to welcome you to Victory Through Christ Ministries. Well, we were on air, I was on air some, a while back on the topic of Freedom Seminar. And right now we're back on a new topic, which is titled Prayer. Actually, the topic of this series is the ABCs of Prayer. Sometimes I ask myself, why do I always go to the hard topics in the, in the in, in the Bible, why do I go into the hard topics, hard subjects? Well, I found out that uh, as a person, I love challenges. And what I've gotten as a result of going, taking on this challenge is what I'll be sharing with you. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for my viewers right now. Lord, that what you have revealed to me, what you've shown to me as a result of uh, my walk with you through prayers, I ask, Lord, that you reveal to them, O oh Lord, and for those that do not know you right now, Lord, I ask that your spirit right now will convict them and speak to their heart. That at the end of this video, Lord, they will come to know you personally in Jesus' name. Alright, today we are talking about uh, prayers, the ABCs of prayer. Prayer is such a neglected uh, subject, such a neglected topic in the body of Christ and in the world, really. And... Uh, how did I come about this? How did I come into this? What happened is that my mentor started talking about prayer. He started tweeting about prayer for up to about a month. Maybe that was about four or five months ago. He started tweeting about prayer, the need for prayer, the importance of prayer. So I was getting these tweets and these messages and it really hit me. It really hit me maybe after a few days or a few weeks of reading and listening to what he had to say. And before you know it, God did something new in my life that my prayer life spiked and uh, it has never remained the same. It's almost uh, four or five months now and my prayer life has never been the same and it's been so pleasant, it's been so beautiful. It is something I can never do without anymore. I'm getting more and more addicted to prayer right now. And uh, I remember when I started, I asked the Lord, I said, I asked this question, I made this request in prayer. I told the Lord, I said, Teach me, let, I said, let prayer be easy for me the way it was with Jesus. When Jesus was on this earth, prayer was his delight. Prayer was his lifestyle. So I asked the Lord, let prayer be my lifestyle. Let prayer be my delight. And I tell you, God answered that prayer. And right now, I can't do without praying. I can't live without prayer. It has become my life. It has become my lifestyle. It is something I enjoy doing. So today I'll be going into the ABCs of prayer, what prayer is really about. A lot of people wonder, a lot of people in Christianity, especially in the society we live in, in America, everything we want, we want it uh, quick, we want it easy. We, we, we have become the drive-through generation. Everything we want is like, it's just, we want it now, right here and now. But there are things in God, God is never changing, God is unchanging. He may change his methods, he may change his ways, but God remains the same. And when it comes to relating with God, the number one way it has been said from the foundation of the world is through prayer. And most people, for the most part, they feel, oh, prayer, prayer is so hard to do, prayer is so, uh, is an Aquilian tax. But I want to present it to you. That's why I called it the ABCs of prayer. Prayer is just, prayer actually is just like ABC. It's just like learning the, the alphabet. So today I'm going to be presenting to you what prayer is all about. And we're going, I'm just going to share one scripture. For today I'm starting with just one scripture. I may be coming with other scriptures as we go on in this, in this series. But today I just have one scripture to share with you on how important and how easy prayer is. Okay, you can turn your Bible to uh, Luke chapter 18. If you don't have your Bible, you can just pause this video and get your Bible. In Luke chapter 18 verse 1, the Bible says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. That is, men ought always to pray and not to faint. That is Jesus talking there. If you look at your Bible, you see that you see that it's written in uh, in red ink. That is Jesus was sharing the, this parable of how important prayer is. 
most people in, in, in Christianity today, most people in the world today live their life without prayer. But what I come to realize, what I come to understand is that people in other religions, people in other religions, they pray so much. They pray, uh, some of them pray five times a day, some pray four times a day, some go uh, days on prayer, some go days, praying for days, some pray for 12 hours, they pray so much. And we call them the counterfeit religions. We call them uh, copycat religions. We say Christianity is the, is the main religion. And Jesus here is saying that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So why are we not praying? I believe prayer is what helps us on this earth. One thing is this, we are spirits living in a, that possesses a soul and we live in a flesh. So the whole essence of you and I is the spirit. The spirit is living, it, it embodies a soul which lives in the flesh on this earth. That means this earth really is not our uh, habitat. This earth really is not our home. So for us to survive on this earth, we have to uh, understand, we have to fine tune our spiritual uh, being, which is the whole essence of us. And how can we fine tune our spiritual, the spiritual part of us, our spirit man, how can we make our spirit man come alive? It is by communicating with the maker of all spirits. The Bible says God is spirit and they that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We have believers today just like I was, just recently, just like I was. We go through Monday through Sunday without praying. Even when we're going to pray, we just be praying for five minutes. We pray like we 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 just uh, like we pray just like we're sending a text message. We pray without communicating. We pray without listening. So Jesus here yeah, is saying, men not always to pray and not to faint. You may engage in religious rites. You might go to church. You might chase after the pastors. You may love the message. You may congregate with other believers, but. There is a, an important task for every believer. And when, when I talk about religious rites, a lot of us go, we participate in religious uh, rituals and rites, but we have no relationship. Prayer is talking about relationship. If you're going to, if you're going to communicate, if you're going to walk with God, listen to me, you cannot walk with someone on a journey without communicating, without talking to that person. So if you're working with God, there must be a means whereby you communicate with Him. Most of us just run off, we live our life like it doesn't matter. We depend so much on the government, we depend so much on our family, we depend so much on our own abilities. But God is saying, come and work with me. So Jesus here, I'm going to share, the, I'm going to read the uh, Amplified, the Amplified um, uh, Bible to us on this same uh, chapter and verse. It says, also, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that, that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward, faint, lose, faint, lose heart, and give up. That is, Jesus is saying that you don't have to be a coward. That is, if you don't pray, that means you be, you're becoming like a coward. You, you're fainting, you're losing heart and giving up. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. All right, what is prayer? I know you have that question in the bottom of your mind. What is prayer? Simply, I'm going to put it to you. Prayer is communication with God. God is spirit and they that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You can worship God by uh, reading, uh, just reading books, going to church, doing uh, all these religious rites. It's a day that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you look at the book of uh, Revelations, John the Apostle said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard. You cannot hear until you are in the spirit. You cannot hear from God until you are in the spirit. You cannot see into the spirit realm until you are in the spirit. So communication, prayer is basically communication with God. And communication, I tell you, is a two-way street, is a two-way traffic. Communication is you speaking to God and God speaking back to you. 
before this time I live my life even as a pastor even as a minister I live my life just like that I read the Bible I watch religious TV I go to uh, the church I participate in religious uh, things but I was lacking in prayer my prayer lifestyle was zero absolutely zero but after the Lord uh, touched me by uh, reading the message, by receiving those texts and those messages from my mentor, God touched me and my, my desire for prayer became intense. And God also answered my prayer for me to be able to wake up in the middle of the night while everybody is sleeping. To wake up. Remember, in the Bible, the Bible says Jesus will always wake up in the middle of the night, a great, way, a great while before dawn. While men are sleeping, he will go and pray. Why did Jesus pray at that time? Because that is the hour, that is, those, that is the time that you have the best concentration, the best focus, where there is no noise, everybody is sleeping. You'll be able to focus. So, prayer simply is communication with God. And some, someone may ask, why do we pray, really? Why do we pray? Listen, just like I said from the beginning, in this world, there are challenges. Look at a fish that is taken out of water. When a fish is taken out of water and put on land, just give it maybe two minutes, three, five minutes at most, that fish will die. The day you give your heart to Jesus Christ, you become a stranger in this world. You become a stranger. Why? Because your spirit took on new life. So you, 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 you are a spirit embodied in, you embody a soul, that is you have a soul which now lives in a flesh. The flesh part is the one you use in communicating with this earth. And listen, the earth already, the Bible says the devil is the prince of the power of the air. He's, the Bible says he is the god of this world. So how can you fight the god of this world with your flesh? That is the area where he has mastery. So for you to survive on this earth, just like that fish, for you to survive, you need to live in the spirit. You need to live in the spirit. The, the Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. 